there folks, welcome to Kingston Park where it's a big week in the North East. A week where eventually, after three weeks away, we're back home. A week where we're after a much needed championship win. And of course a week where the big preview returns. This is what's coming up on today's show. We take a look back at what happened last time out at Kingston Park. Then it's onwards to the Panthers. Everything you need to know ahead of this weekend's visit of Halifax. And we catch up with Ted Chapelow on all things dress sense injuries and the rest of the championship season. So much to get through then, so let's get straight into it. Amazingly, it was three weeks ago that we last saw a championship rugby league ball kicked so past in anger here at Kingston Park. I tell you what folks, what a night it was here in the North East. You feel that there is something building up here in the North East. This time he's going to hoist this high. Boafel waits right in the corner. What a kick! Great catch. And he looks to bring it back with a bit of interest. Oh, and it was taken high. Kick is deep. And this is going to be a tester, and it's fumbled. It went backwards, I think. It's going to be picked up by Fleming, and Fleming could be in trouble. That is a great kick, Jake. Eves waits. Right on the try line. How are we going to get the first points of the night? Here's D. Ball over the top. Caught on the far wow. side. And it's Halsall who dives over in the corner. What a finish. What a pass from Jesse D. Doro with the kick pressure. The kick goes high. It'll hold up in the wind. It's swirling all over. Kicks to part. Great catch, Fleming. Really good catch. But can he stay in the field of play? No. Smith kicks long and downfield and Mullen retreats, he's open, this is going to roll over the line and it's not, and he's got to get out, evades the first tackle. So oh, slips a pass to Abbas Miski, it's a tight one, it's Newcastle 4, witness nil. Thunder on the front foot, what can they do here, Digos gets it out wide, they've got bodies in motion, no moving wide, big chance here, Boafo in at the corner, Boafo will double the lead and not only that, has the presence of mind to come right round. Back into the play, and he's with a short pass near the run. They're trying to punch a hole up the middle, and Shorrocks is away. He's got support, he's outside, but he comes inside, and Owens makes the tackle. And he's got his hands on it. Is he going to put the kick in? He's going to run it long through the gap. Surely gets the ball away, he might not need to. Oh, he's tackled and in short, and he slides over the line. And that could be the lifeline that the Vikings needed. So here comes the kick, right footed, sends it straight through the middle. Look at the reaction of the Thunder faithful. They're enjoying their night out here. So a brilliant night against the Vikings then, but we haven't been able to capitalise on that win on the road in the last two or three weeks, going down first to York and then to the Sheffield Eagles. But it's the visit of the Halifax Panthers this Saturday. Way home are you.
So, the visit of the informed Panthers then to Kingston Park this Saturday, 3 p.m. kickoff time. Mark it down in your diaries, but if you needed to brush up on your facts, facts, well, you're in the perfect place. This is this week's In Opposition. So, everything you need to know about Halifax there then, it's time to find out everything you need to know about one of our Thunder Stars. And I'm delighted to be joined by the one and only, Ted Chappell right. out. Ted, good to see you fella. Um, before we get into the whole rugby thing, we need to clear something up. Yeah, go on. Because I'm sure the fans are going to be watching this in the next few days, and that is the latest The Couch episode with Josh Eaves. Oh, bad. You've been ripped. I'm not going to lie that you've been ripped. It's your dress sense at the yeah. races. You're getting the right to reply, go for it. I think I looked all right. I think it's a scapegoat for people who are insecure about what they look like. So, you know, I keep in my own lane and do my own thing. So yeah. I won't be too brutal on some of the lads. I like that, taking the moral high ground. That's I what... didn't expect that from you, to be honest. No, you know, I've got to live in the apartments with him, so <laughs> I've got to watch what I say, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. What do they say? Don't defecate while you, exactly. you sleep, don't yeah. they? So uh, exactly. good on you, mate, good on you. Listen, let's talk about the rugby side of things because second season at Thunder now, how are you doing personally with it being second season? Not like football where you get second season syndrome, is it? Oh no, I'm enjoying it. I said, me and Jay, obviously we came from Witness, we signed it out, like, we've been there for nine years, so it was something new to us, moving to a new club, settled in really well with it, Den and Fred and the squad and stuff, yeah. and built from there. Second year, we both knew we wanted to be here, and uh, I know things haven't gone away, but I like to think we're progressing for going forward in a personal level and as a squad as well. So yeah, um, yeah enjoying it building in the right direction just got to get some little things right and hopefully things will start falling into place yeah i was going to say that pretty much sums up york and sheffield really, really nicely doesn't it yeah. two difficult weeks i suppose where did things go wrong on the road for the thunder would you say oh it was it was mad, mad when we came on the back of witness a really heightened game obviously it was good to get the win yeah. and then going into york especially what they did last time to us it was a a big game to target and we just weren't good enough it's like this i know people search for reasons but on the day you just got to say we weren't good enough york were uh, a good quality team and they just got on top of us sheffield uh, was just where we had a mad 15 minutes mm -hmm. where we just conceded stupid tries when we shouldn't have and we really if we had just got in the game and stayed in the ground for a bit longer got to half time and then been able to play down the hill where we showed a bit of our class there the gap wouldn't have been so big where we just let Sheffield get away with it for 15 minutes and then it was too far gone by the end. I suppose the the fact that we went down to 12 men didn't help, but it, it wasn't you that got, no, <laughs> that no, got yeah. simbin. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, I looked on Twitter after it said, oh, Ted Chappell's been simbin, and I hell, don't remember that. <laughs> so no, Peachy, I'll let Peachy cop that one. <laughs> Good on you, thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> Obviously a lot of the fans, as fans do, you know, after a couple of defeats, they start getting a bit worried, a bit concerned. What would be your message to the fans at the minute, given at this point of the Thunder season? I'd just say look at the overall picture of it. Obviously, yeah, we've had two bad defeats. Mm -hmm. um, we would want wanted to have won them, won them both. We targeted four out of five games that we wanted, so we are on our own standard falling short. So not to worry that they have to set the standard for us. We know we're under par at the moment. Uh, we have people coming in and out. We have a young team as well. It's about sticking by them lads as well, sticking by the team, and we can... Um, We'll get there. I know we've got a couple of, I don't know if I can say, a couple of lads coming in now for the the game. They're going to add some quality and we've got lads on the sideline injured again who are going to come in and add some quality to the team when ready. So it is difficult. It's You've got to bear with a young squad getting used to things and them getting their experience as well as others. And we'll uh, we'll find our way through more than confident about that. It's just going to take a little bit of time. It's not offering like any excuses forward, but obviously injuries have disrupted our season somewhat so far. How much of a disruptive effect does that have, not necessarily in training, 
but on a match day when you can't get any momentum going with a you know a, a standard 13. Oh yeah, injuries happen, and it's it's one of them where you, you it's tough to you say you can use them as an excuse or not. But we play a game in rugby league, and yeah. it's a physical sport. Like don't get me wrong, you I look at uh, obviously Kumatai and uh, Foz on the bench yeah. not playing, and I'm like, oh, I'd love to be in a team alongside Kuma. Um, Fars with the Super League experience, even Jay's been sat on the sideline not playing and stuff. So obviously you do miss them big personalities in the team mm. because they're people that really, when things are tough, you're looking around and they're the ones driving you through as well. So you miss that. But then again, we've got good young lads there and the, the, they come in and it's good to get them and breed them. And we won't realise the fans maybe not so much now, but how much that would have benefited them being able to play consistent rugby at a younger age. It benefited me, I had to go along to Whitehaven, I played two years at 18, 19, mm -hmm. champ. So these young lads are gonna get this experience and grow on it. Well, if you ask me, would I would like to obviously be standing aside as well, obviously the likes of Akuma Tai yeah. and Foz and stuff because of the experience they bring, but I don't think they're too far off and hopefully we can uh, we can get them back. You mentioned Jay there, how is he getting on now? Oh, he's just annoying. Right? <laughs> Some things never yeah, change. Yeah, exactly, his injuries <laughs> just made him worse. He just, I think the physio staff are just so annoyed with him. Now they send him everywhere. It's like you're over there, 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 just so. But no, he's 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 a joke. He's working hard. It's frustrating for him. What happened yeah. wasn't ideal, like. But he's uh, he's bounced back in a, a better mentality than he, when he had his shoulder. He's trained really hard, and he's looking forward to getting back in. Yeah. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll wait to see till he's back. I think the physio staff will be happy to get rid of him, <laughs> kicking him out as yeah, soon as they possibly exactly. can. Exactly. Um, look, we're looking at the past. Let's look at the future. Obviously, Halifax the next team to visit Kingston Park. Is it going to be good to be back home? Because obviously you mentioned it before. Last time we were here at Kingston Park was that excellent win over Widnes. Just a case of channeling that again Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, you always have that added incentive when you're at home. You want to make it a place where people don't want to come. You want to make it uncomfortable for them. Uh, we had a brilliant atmosphere at Widnes from the fans, from both sides, and we managed. It was a really big game. We see the same thing at Halifax. Like they're coming over to Newcastle, they're coming over to our pitch, and we need to um, we need to front up to that. So hopefully we get people down to watch and they enjoy the rugby and stuff because we've always had a good game especially last year we, when we played them away it was close with trying it I think mm -hmm. and we're looking they're, they're going well and we're looking forward to trying to stop the momentum Was there a feeling against Witness on that Monday night that you cracked it a little bit in terms of breaking rugby league through to the people of Newcastle because I know that's the long term aim here it is to get more people following the sport you mentioned the atmosphere and how many people were down here. Was there a feeling amongst the players that you cracked it? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to think we broke through a bit better. As I said, the atmosphere was built up, like credit to the media team as well. It was built up really well through that. And uh, we knew it was a big game. It was, uh, it was a big game against Widnes. We, um, both teams needed the win, mm. like, and we got the win through. And I think the fans felt the passion that the lads had on the field and stuff. And we showed up for them and they showed up for us and it was working hand in hand so hopefully we get the same again in Halifax they create an atmosphere and hopefully we can ride that ride on that and show what we're about we just one on Halifax you know they're in a good good groove of form at the minute aren't they the Panthers what, what is making them a tough test at the minute in the championship oh they're just they, they've had a, a good team for years now they've, they've gelled together quite well they've got some really experienced players in there a um, couple that I've, I've managed to play with like Ben Cav and players like that, players that have a bit of experience in the league. Um, they like to play around with the middles a lot and they're quite powerful to point as well. They're, they carry hard and they tackle hard, so it's going to be a good test for us. So we need to combat that. We've been working on in training how to combat that and we're confident that we can, uh, we can get on top. Top man, I appreciate your time, mate. It's been uh, good to catch up with you and obviously, hopefully Jay gets out of the physio room ASAP for certain and yeah. uh, all of our injuries do, which leads us absolutely oh, perfectly on see. to find out where our injuries are and uh, to head across to our physio and find out what the crack is. This is this week's treatment tale. Hi, my name's Paul Miller, I'm the head physio at Newcastle Thunder. Welcome to the treatment table. Josh Woods, as you'll have seen and heard the, the kind of the last treatment table, um, he had a little bit of an operation to settle down an ankle problem. He's progressing really nicely um, with looking to return him into full training over the next couple of weeks to then get him back into um, some contention for some game time as soon as we can. 
Alex Foster is settling well. Um, he's been struggling with a, a little bit of a neck injury. Um, that is settling well. He's back into training now um, and should be in contention for the match day squad within the next couple of games. Craig Mullen's been out um, for the past couple of weeks. He picked up a high ankle sprain in training. He's settling quite nicely. Um, he should be back with us within the next few weeks um, with looking to play for our next game down in London. Kumatai is progressing really nicely. Um, we've had a, a couple of consultant opinions on him. Um, he's returning into his running at the moment. Um, and has started doing little, little bits of light training and things um, so hopefully he shouldn't be too far away from getting some action um, and getting him back in the squad. Um, so if you saw the Sheffield game down in Featherston last week um, Jack tightened up through his hamstring um, so as a little bit of a precaution we've taken him out of training and out of the squad for this week just to give us a little bit more time to settle um, Jack down and get him back on to the field. Brad Gallagher is just a bit sore off the, the game against Sheffield um, but he's um, just been taken out of training this week as a little bit of a precaution um, he's just having a, a couple of little knocks um, so we'll settle those down and get him back for the next game. Jay Chapelhow, if you look at the, the treatment table the last time, um, he had a nasty ankle injury against York in the, the first round of the Cup. Um, he's coming on well, we've started him with some um, all the G training, so some anti-gravity training over, over the past couple of weeks. Um, he's had no reaction to that. Being back down to see the consultant, he was happy with his progress. Um, we're going to be getting him through um, onto some on feet running and movement um, over the next a um, couple of months or so. So Jesse D um, had a little bit of a, a shoulder issue going into the witness game um, here at Kingston Park. That got a little bit worse. Um, so he's going to be going in for um, some surgery next week. Um, and then we'll look to get him rehabbed through and get him back as soon as we can. <laughs>